the unrest is growing. The power building. It's anarchy rules! The unthinkable has become a reality. The ultimate battle for the Impact World Championship. Who's the best in the world? Crowd is electric! Is upon us. I'm shocked! Are we looking at the next world champion? Impact Wrestling presents Rebellion. Live Sunday, April 28th, only on pay-per-view. We are happy to announce that Rebellion is live Sunday, April 28th on pay-per-view from the Rebel Entertainment Complex in Toronto. VIP packages and tickets will be available on Monday, March 4th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Last year's Slammiversary was from the Rebel Entertainment Complex. It was considered by many to be the show of the year in all of professional wrestling and Rebellion promises to deliver even more. Don't miss out on this huge event. Now you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Non-Stop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans. This is Trent along with my co-host. Wait, that is not Kyle. That is Eli Drake somehow. Actually, no, it's not Eli Drake. That is the Eli Drake dummy button, which is still available in the uh, iTunes App Store and Google Play. But uh, yeah, Kyle is not with me with his uh, his sound bites. So here I am with sound bites. I am here with the dummy button because uh, you know what? Uh, I, I got a little I got a little news for you guys later on on who uh, who the dummy of the week is. So it's only fitting that I have a dummy button. So I'm still gonna do a dummy of the week even though Kyle's not here. But we'll get to that later in the show. But yeah, it's just me hanging out here, guys. I'm on the Impact Lounge. Wanted to get something in. The Super Bowl just ended uh, a little while ago. Kyle is somewhere licking his wounds. I don't know where the hell he is. Uh, actually, no, I know where he is. He, you know, he's not feeling too good. Guys, truth be told, guys, along under the weather. He's a wimp. He's a wimp. It's it's two days into February. The month he said, Trent, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna drink. I'm going sober this month. I'm not I'm not putting any alcoholic premium alcoholic beverages into my body i said cal i'm proud of you that's awesome i'm uh you know i'm not a drinker no i've never had a sip of alcohol in my life and i said cal join me on this path here man you can do this too try it for a month it's february 3rd kid he's just sick down for the count can't handle it down for the count kid couldn't even make it a goddamn a goddamn weekend without without it now he's he's out well, it's me we're here with you guys on the lounge, my loungers, my Impact Tribe. Super happy to be with you guys. As always, I love talking Impact Wrestling. Today, I'm going to be breaking down the February 1st, 2019 episode of Impact Wrestling. Uh, I watched it on Twitch. If you watched it on Pursuit, let me know. We're going to compare some notes in, our, in the comments, as we always do. Uh, it was from Front in Mexico. This was the second show in Mexico on this loop. It's uh, I enjoyed it. I've been uh, I've been critical of the Mexico tapings, and the last time they were there, it was um, you know it was a little weird because uh, they had their configuration of the building was a little weird. The crowd setup was strange. This run seems to be better for sure. This run I like it a lot better. The crowd's way more into it, which I love. Lively crowd. They configured the seating differently. I like that. So it's a different look. Same arena as last time. Some new talent made an appearance here. But all right, we're gonna get into that. But before we do, guys. Before we do, we always, even though Kyle's not here, even though Kyle screwed all of us, okay, even though he screwed all of us, and he's, uh, you know, and he's a, uh, he's a, he's he's a guy who's uh, who's letting us down today, but more more importantly, he's a. Uh, so you know, we're still gonna read the comments because that's what we do. That's what this uh, this team does, guys. So all right, I'm gonna jump into some comments. I'm gonna get into the review. I got my notes. We're gonna get into this thing. Uh, by the way, if you guys watched the Super Bowl, how do you guys feel about that result? That's uh, it was a boring Super Bowl. I didn't like it. I thought it was extremely boring. It was like three nothing going into the, into the fourth. I don't know. I'm not a big football guy, but man, if you are a football guy, let me know how that one ranks because I didn't I didn't enjoy it at all. Good food though. I was at a buddy's house for some for a little party. Had some good food. Had a little um, 
Had a little chili, which was topped off by Hemi hot sauce. My band, we have our own hot sauce. I don't know if I mentioned that before. We have our own hot sauce. It's for sale. Hemimusic.com. Take a look. See what you think. Uh, pick up a bottle. Pays the bills, guys. It's a good hot sauce. It's called Soul Taker. Topping that chili off with Soul Taker hot sauce. You're a hot sauce guy. Let me know. Leave a comment. Tell me. See, I'm going to be plugging my own shit. If it's just me and Kyle's not here, I'm, I'm plugging all of it. This is going to be, this is about me. It's all about me. What about me? What about Raven? All right? That's what I'm going for here, guys. But anyway, again, thanks for staying. If you're still on this, you know, I'm only, what, five minutes into this? You guys are still on with me. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Going to read a couple of comments here, guys. Let's jump in. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Uh, this guy, the guy who's been throwing out theories, some awesome theories lately, uh, our storyline ideas. This guy kicks out this week. He goes, it'd be great if Zachary Wentz randomly knows Spanish because he's possessed by the ghost of Eddie Guerrero. Then he starts scaring the shit out of Conan. That would be a good supernatural, but supernatural, but comedic gimmick right there. Better yet, how about he's only possessed when he's stoned on the Mexican weed? Remember, the weed is implied in those se those rascal segments there to this guy. They never actually said what they're, uh, what's going on in that room. Uh, Richard Cartledge says, John Moxley, uh, a.k.a. Dean Ambrose's contract with that other company, runs out in April. Impact has a pay-per-view in April. Just saying. I'm just saying too, sir. You never know nowadays. The way, the, the way it works, we'll see. We'll see how things, how things develop. I, I don't put it past, uh, put it past anybody. You know, to, to show up on, on any company at this point. The Doctrine of Mayhem says, uh, I'd love to see something go down between Mr. Anderson and Eli Drake. That's promo gold. A lot of people have been mentioning this. This is since the suggestion came up in the comments. It's been uh, it's been kind of gotten some rhythm over here on, on the with our impact tribe. Could this be something? I saw that it, uh, Anderson is appearing at a Legends of Wrestling um, convention coming up soon, so Maybe he's back and making the rounds. You never know. Uh, he says, it's a damn good episode. It's smooth action. I'd like to see Vikingo more often for sure. I agree. That, that kid is good. That kid is good. I don't know what the language barrier might be. I'd like to see him more. Uh, he wants a Bobo Club shirt. Guys, we had a Bobo Club shirt designed for us. Go look at the We Talk Impact Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. We Talk Imp it's at We Talk Impact. We had a Bobo Club des shirt designed for us by the TNA Movement guys. Take a look. It's fantastic. I'd love to get it printed up. Uh, he also says Brian Cage will be the next champ down the line, but it wouldn't cry if Cross gets the title first. I think that's where we're heading. I think my prediction, Cross screws Cage for this belt at Uncaged, and Cross takes it in Vegas somehow. Somehow. And then you got you set up Cross and Cage. Perfect. Perfect. They've been brewing them for a while. Cross and Cage, man, goes right in. And he says, I love your band, man. Really digging the music. Thank you very much for, for listening to Hemi, man. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see what else we got here, guys. Okay. Uh, AK Infinity says, I don't know where anything is going, but that's what makes this show so damn interesting. Awesome. I agree. It's cool. That's what I want. No spoilers. I don't read spoilers. Let's, let's keep it fun. You know, what the hell? Uh, C. O'Connor says, I agree with creating a whole new TV show. They could also create a championship to be defended there and on pay-per-views. Could work as a mid-card title that we need. Cage needs to be screwed over even more so he can be the big baby face of Impact. I'm, I'm with it. I was just talking to my buddy uh, Basil, who's my co-host on the Backstage Boys podcast that I do. And he's a photographer at AEW. He actually did uh, photography for Homecoming and, and some tapings. And uh, we were talking about how we can use a mid-card title. An actual TV title. They, they did it in the you know, a couple years back. It got screwed. Let's do it again. Let's let's do the TV title right. There's a bunch of guys who could really benefit from a proper mid card belt. Let's do a TV title. I think it. I think it's time. Hell, I mean, I think Hardest of Hardcore has a Twitch title. I mean, do something like that. Make it exclusive. Make it fun. I think it could be really cool. You know, put it on Explosion. Build it up. Uh, Steve Ewan says, "Hey, Trent and Kyle, great review this week. Uh, great review." Uh, this week is getting crazy with MLW and Impact working together. To Dean Ambrose and Hideo Tommy leaving for free agency. In a world of Matt Seidel and others, Dreamer and Conan taking on creative for Impact. Impact Wrestling is a buzz again. I hate it when people don't crap on 
when another company loses talent, but when Impact does, they're dead and going out of business. It's a double standard in the dirt sheets. Thanks, guys. You're my favorite when it comes to Impact. And P.S., how do you like the commercial during Impact with different people? I love it. it makes Twitch more interactive with fans. Thanks, Steve. Steve, absolutely. I'm going to go backwards on the comments here. I love it. it makes it feel live. It gives it, a, it gives it an identity. It's fun. I think it's interactive. The comment, live commenting, the chat room is out of control. I love it. Total fun thing. I love watching on Twitch. This, to me, I'm, it's the greatest thing they've done. It says the Twitch uh, simulcast. Uh, thank you very, very much for the for the um, for listening. We appreciate that. The whole thing with the the uh, dirt sheets and impact. I don't know what this bias is. I don't know where it came from. I I, I don't know. They, I can't believe they still have it when all the players in the company are the same players everywhere else that they love other places. They love Don Callis, New Japan, but they don't love me here. I don't know, man. It's a we. It's an odd bias. I'll never understand it. It's lightened up a little bit lately, which is better, but I don't know. I Personally, I think these guys were so desperate for Impact to become the one that dethroned the WWE back in the day. And it was so close. I think they... Here's... It's an odd theory. Tell me... Tribe, tell me what you think about this. I personally feel that they were so desperate for someone to dethrone the WWE and Impact came so close to getting to that that spot of that... I mean, they were, they were doing damn good, man. And getting all that buzz, and then they dropped the ball under some bad management, and people resented them for it. They're like, ah, oh, you guys are the only ones who come close, and you screwed it up, and but whatever. I don't know. I feel that's it. I think that's why they're getting so behind all elites, because they're thinking that's going to be the one to dethrone. I think deep down, these guys want WWE dethroned, man. The dirt sheets have always been shunned by the WWE. I think they want them dethroned by a company like All Elite that caters to them. I mean, in the beginning, Impact catered to these guys, too. Let's not forget that. Jeremy Borash was a source of news for these guys for a long time. So it's not out of, out of question, you know? I mean, like, they want some connection. This is the connection. Anyway, um, McEdro says, guys, where the hell is BQ? Good question, McEdro. Where the hell is BQ? I don't know. No, we know. He's, uh, he's doing his own thing. He might get a BQ return at some point. But he's entrusted us. To run the channel. And this week, he's entrusted to me because goddamn, uh, goddamn Kyle's nowhere to be found. <laughs> yep, he's a dummy, yeah. So he's nowhere to be found. So, hey, but this, you know, we, we appreciate him uh, entrusting us, Kyle, once again. Dummy. And, uh, you know, hey, we're going to keep the, the the Impact Lounge going. He'll be back, though, guys, at some point. It's just, uh, you know, life gets in the way. I mean, he's a military man and everything, so life gets in the way sometimes. He's got kids. Things happen. You got you to gotta take care of stuff. All right. Jamie Wiseman, the crowd was on fire all night for the show. Agreed. Much better crowd this time. McGedra, you also said that Ethan Page is the new EC3. Guys, you'll see. He's got it. I agree. Give him the ball. I think he can do it. I think he can do it. I don't know about EC3. EC3 is in a, in a, a very unique, unique talent in his own right. I don't know what the hell he's doing now. I don't really watch where he's at now. But the fact that I'm not hearing enough buzz about him kind of bums me out. Uh, but, hey... I think I think uh, I agree. Ethan Page is a phenomenal talent. Give, if you give him the ball, he can run. That's the thing. Any independence I've seen him on, he runs with it. He does a lot of independence around my area here in Chicago. The guy's great. All right, guys, I'm going to do a couple more, and then we will uh, we'll jump into the review. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, we got a bunch of questions going on for uh, for Rohit for next week. Our, I believe we're planning for next week to do that review. So. Rohit Raju is going to be on next week. So, guys, if you have a comment for us to ask Rohit Raju, leave it for us. We're going to ask him. And let's see what else we got here. Lee Poulton says the Rascals were, were a great team. They might be the next tag team or X Division champions. I think they'll be both. I think Trey is going to get that X title at some point. And Dez and Zach are eventually are going to get those tag team belts. I think it's inevitable. Uh, it's to be a crime if they don't get it. They're, they're all too good, man. They're all too damn good. Uh, Dinesh, uh, I hope I don't butcher this last name. Siwa, Siwakadi says, great review, but where, what's going on with the Adam and Roe show? We asked Adam and I talked to Roe. Scheduling is a little bit of an issue. They're getting on it. Uh, Adam and Roe, if anybody doesn't know, are our partners here on the Impact Lounge. They do their own show. They used to be the weekly guys. We took over weekly. They do a news brief type by Reader's Digest type of discussion talk show. 
They're a little behind. Scheduling's been tough. You know, they got their commitments. But they'll be back. Ro assured me things are things are being worked out. And let's see here. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? A couple more. A couple more. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, man. So many comments, guys. So many good questions for Rohit. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. No Walls Could Stop Impact Wrestling by Charlie Boy Salvador. <laughs> Saldivar. I agree, man. Hey, that's what I said last on the review. I said, hey, they couldn't put a wall up, man. Impact that they were down to Mexico. Absolutely could not put a wall up. But, uh, all right, I'm going to read one from Dancing Mike, who's our buddy, Dancing Mike. So I finally got to see the show. I haven't listened to this episode yet, but all I know is there were four guys in the ring at the end. And the one who looked like he can't hang with the others is holding the strap. Don kept making excuses for Johnny's kicks and punches, quote-unquote, not having much on them. Dude has the all the offensive firepower of a six-year-old Jeff Hardy and makes Dean Malenko look like Rowdy Piper in the personality department. <laughs> oh, my God. I swear he's just an animated mixture of mineral oil and unbleached flour molded into the night, molded into a nice shape with a wig on it. Can't wait till they're at the end of the Johnny Impact experience. Can you tell I'm not impressed with Johnny? Dancing Mike, I love your comments. You are you are comment gold. I have been very critical of Johnny. I think he's a he looks like a million bucks. He he can he's got this incredible ability, but I don't. I just his his promos. I feel they fall very weak. I even watched the promo he did for the um, Brace for Impact special with you know with I think with. Um, I believe it was Destiny. It was one of the Canadian show, the partner show on Twitch that took place over the weekend. And I just couldn't get, I mean, the even the hype promo. He was defending against MJF and, uh, gosh, who else? Uh, Ethan Page. And I was like, come on, man. Like, he, I just feel like he really does not have it in that charisma department to be the top guy. He's a great second player. He's a great challenger. I don't think he's a top guy. I, I, he doesn't have it for me. I, I, I'm not look. I'm not knocking the guy for the ability he has, but I don't think he has the ability to be the top guy. He's not your top guy. I don't know what the. I I often felt they ran with him because of the Survivor thing, but it's been on for a while. It's like, geez, man. I um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But hopefully, Mike, I'm with you. I I'm I'm, I'm ready for it to be done. It's it's Cajun Cross. We're ready to go. They're lit up enough that either one taking it. Is 100% believable. 100% believable. All right, last comment. I'm going to close it out here, guys. HSG Sabu. Guys, thanks for making me laugh and giving me a great Pro Impact podcast, fellas. If this podcast was about WWE, you guys would be getting millions of plays, but fuck selling out Impact for Life. Hey, man. I love it. I'm going to sum this. This is a great one to end it on. It, I've been loyal to this company since day one. I've watched every single bit of uh, programming they put on during the TNA days and, and t- until now. And that's the idea, right? I, we're trying to grow this podcast along with Impact. We're all trying to grow it together. I, I want to grow alongside. I want to be a tool that helps the, that the company grow. Uh, I only hope that they hear at some point. You know, They hear and they, they see what we're doing here. Let them know. Let them know that's what we're doing. You guys tweet Impact. Tweet their, their guys in charge. You know, Cyrus, Tiat Demore, Ed Nordholm, uh, Kevin Sullivan. Let their guys know. What we're doing, I, I, I mean, we try to create the buzz, but yeah, if coming from you guys is what matters. Let them know what we're doing. Tag us in it. Follow us on We Talk Impact on uh, Twitter. Tag us. Let it, let them know. Let us know. But that's what we try to be, man. We're a pro impact podcast. You know, look, I clearly don't put everything over. You know, we don't we don't just blindly put things over. We just I just said my I'm not happy with Johnny. I'm not a big fan of Johnny being the uh, being the champion. So we're fair. We're fair, but we're pro impact. We love the company truly believe in the company the and the idea is to have a have a really positive discussion you know about the company with guys like you all you commenters man every week you guys make it worthwhile i love it i love it I, i'm i'm bummed kyle isn't here to uh to do this with me today but you know if i if i get the platform i'm, I'm gonna thank each and every one of you. i love how much support and love you guys give us via the company it's great so let's keep doing it man let's keep doing it let us know uh let them know you know, let us know if you want anything we can do to, to even be more positive and better and uh, check us out, you know, de- deliver more the, for what you guys want. If there's anything else we can be doing, tell us. You know, we want to do it. All right, guys, we're going to jump into the February 1st episode here from Mexico. Great episode. Uh, again, I can't do it because I don't have – I can't do it with my uh, my supposed 
my supposed co-host. He just happens to not be here. So, you know, again, one more time. But uh, it's a dummy button, guys. Don't forget. Eli Drake. It's in the uh, App Store on the Google Play Store. Pick up a pick up. Yeah, it's a buck. It's hilarious. You get to do stuff like this like I'm doing. There's more in there, too. There's way more. There's more stuff. There's even more stuff in here. Listen, listen. I'm going to put more stuff in here, guys. All right, so let me talk to you. Let, here, perfect. I'm going to go into this. Let me talk to you. All right, we're going to go into the review now. <laughs> I'm having to way too much fun with this goddamn button. All right, guys, kicked it off with Lucha Brothers and Taurus uh, versus LAX and Daga. This was a uh, three-on-three Lucha-style exhibition. This match was on straight fire. Straight fire. I've been using straight fire a lot. I've been using the fire emoji and, and the term straight fire a lot uh, lately. I don't know what's going on with me, but... Guys, this match, the crowd was hot. They were all about the cero miedo, animo. They were going nuts. Uh, I loved every bit of Obviously, this is to get the Lucha Brothers and LAX storyline further. But being thrown into the mix, Daga and uh, and um, Taurus, that was cool. Daga has been on the radar, right? Daga's been in Lucha Underground. People have been talking about Daga. He is... Um, Actually, Tessa Blanchard's shoot boyfriend. They've been very public about it online. And I've seen him at shows with her. I was at Warrior Wrestling in Chicago. Uh, they're a company that brings in a lot of impact talent. They brought in Tessa. Daga was with, Daga was on the show too, I think. He um they were there together. Guy's super talented, man. I would welcome addition to the to the impact roster. I mean, I'm I'm all for it. Bring him in. There's no hesitation on my part. I should like like Taurus too. I think he's local to AAA. I uh, don't see him coming in full time. I think Daga lives in the states, makes it a lot easier. But guys, I think I think uh, Daga's a great, a great would be a great addition to the uh, to the Impact roster. Let me know what you guys think though too. Let me know what you guys think of him from where you've seen him before. But super over match of the crowd. Lucha Brothers and Torres take the win on this one, and then they challenge LAX for the belts next week. I think Pentagon made the challenge in Espanol. Which was translated for us. I appreciate that. For us non-Spanish speakers. I'm not talking to Whoopsie. I know Whoopsie knew every word that was coming out of coming out of Pentagon's mouth. And by the way, side note, Whoopsie, I'm sorry I didn't call upon you to do this one with me, even though Kyle's not here. It's late. It's post-Super Bowl. I figured you are out. You're an hour ahead of me, too. We promised to get Whoopsie on for a for our Latin consulting on this uh, uh, before they leave Mexico, for sure. All right, so yeah, guys. LAX and Lucha Brothers next week for the tag belts. I am really looking forward to it. This match is booked all over the country currently. They kicked it off at Homecoming, and as soon as Homecoming was done, the company I work for in Chicago, AAW, we announced it for Chicago, which took place uh, on the 26th of the month and um, of January. As soon as we announced it, I think House of Glory did, PCW Ultra. I mean, it was announced like five places. So this is this is a match that's pe- that's got people going across the country here. Obviously, they can all work. Now this is TV. What my my buddy Basil made a really good point. He goes, "You gotta look at it this way. The indies are like the house shows for Impact. So if AEW did the Lucha Brothers and um, and uh, LAX, by the time we see it on Impact, it's like hyped up even further. And that goes for all the different indies doing it. So it kind of works, right? It's kind of cool, but." Any if if the previous matches are any indication, this match is going to be insane. This match is going to be awesome. I am really looking forward to it. This uh, especially for the tag belts in Mexico with that crowd ready to roll uh, with their boys. I uh, I'm psyched. I did notice one thing. I did notice that you know, LAX is is clearly Puerto Rican, and uh, even though it's lat you know it's Latin American exchange, I mean the crowd is they do heal them out. And it's all about Penta and Phoenix. Now, granted, obviously Penta and Phoenix are the our hometown heroes at this point, but uh, you can see it's like it's like even Lat- LAX can't even get that Latin rhythm, you know, on, with the with that Mexican crowd. They're all about like, nah, we're cheering our Mexican boys. That's it. Nobody else. But uh, but yeah, guys, it was cool. Um, I'm I'm psyched about it that it's gonna be a it's gonna be a a title match. And I love when title matches happen uh, in other countries. I love seeing that in the lineage and, you know, things change hands in other countries, things happen. I love that, man. I, I think that's fun. It makes, it gives history, rich history to the, uh, to the belts. So we'll see what happens there. We kick it back in, into the backstage area with uh, Melissa Santos, who's doing really good so far. I like her already. 
I think she's a good uh, – if you were going to replace Mackenzie Mitchell with anybody, most of Santos is perfect. Uh, high, oh, a hype promo. You know, Cross is, is hyping up the match later on in the evening with Moose. I mean, with Moose and Cross taking on uh, Cage and Johnny. And uh, there was a great, great line in this, guys. Uh, <laughs> Cross is talking to Melissa Santos, and he goes, yeah, there's a big guy named Brian Cage. Maybe you've heard of him. Hilarious, because Mosa Santos, as we know, is Brian Cage's fiance. So I thought that was funny. I know he purposely said that. I'm calling it cross. I know you purposely said that to pop people who knew. I even tweeted it out. He retweeted it. It was hilarious. So I know he repurposely said it. It popped me huge because I think her reaction was great and it was awesome. I think she smirked. It was, it was, it was perfect. Um, we go to a Twitch in between there. The Twitch in between on this evening are Don Callis. And Josh Matthews and Jimmy uh, Jimmy Jacobs is over at Don Callis' house. I think it was his house. And they're hanging. It was very implied what the hell's going on. Don was saying, uh, <laughs> we're about to get in the hot tub later. You know, we're going to hang out, write some write some show. Josh is at his house. Like, what the hell's happening at Don's house? I love it. It, it keeps in-betweens fun. It keeps it comedic. At one point, Josh said something in the line of the night. Don was, uh, he goes, he goes, oh man, we're going to be here all night. Cancel the hot tub. And I don't know why that was just funny. Just cancel the hot tub. But uh, you know, I was picturing Don Callis and Jimmy Jacobs soaking in a hot tub talking about storylines are going to put Killer Cross in. It's hilarious to me. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Am I, am I, am I out of my mind? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we go from that, guys, to Conan and LAX backstage. The match is official. Tag belt match is official, and it's out of respect. It's going to be a match based on respect. Here's where shit has to fall apart, because it can't be about respect forever. They, I'm going to urge you guys. They had the they they had a big fallout at AEW on the 26th, and we have a promo with LAX. Go to AEW Pro uh, on Twitter. Look at the LAX promo. That again, that's hype for this match. Look at it that way. Just see what we did. See what we did, you guys. I think you guys will all love it. You'll all love it. Check out AEW, man. We are, we are, um, most of the Impact roster works for AEW. So if you like it, it's a good, another way to see them. Okay, go from there, guys, uh, to a big reveal. And, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was big news. This is big, big, cool news. Uh, they went and first, oh, it was kind of confusing. Josh Matthews says, we're going to have big news tonight. We're going to announce the next pay-per-view uh, later on in the evening. And then he said, nope, we're going to do it. We're going to do it now. We're actually going to go and do it right now. And he's like, all right, Don, you ready for it? And Don's like, yep, I am. I, na- I uh, He goes, I named it actually. And Josh goes, uh, he goes, How'd you, how do you name pay-per-views? He goes, eh, I just watch Steven Seagal movies. And I get inspired by what to name pay-per-views. Hilarious. I pop for that one too. I'm a huge Steven Seagal nerd. I love Steven Seagal movies, especially those first, you know, six with the uh, Out for Justice, Hard to Kill, Above the Law, Mark for Death, like the three word dramatic, uh, dramatic, over the top sounding titles. I think Don at one point said, Yeah, it's going to be called Under Siege. But, <laughs> but uh, it was announced, guys, April 28th at the Rebel Complex in Toronto. It's called Rebellion. Who called it sit calling being called rebellion? Your favorite host right here. Your favorite one. Not that not that uh not that loser Kyle. Tell you. Not that loser Kyle. Oh that was wrong that was the wrong button. I meant to hit this one. Dummy. Not that one. Not not that not Kyle. Not that dummy Kyle. Me. I revealed it. I revealed that name, Rebellion, last week. I said because somebody asked us, I go, what do you guys think they're gonna name the next pay per view? I said, eh, if they do it from Rebel, I'm thinking Rebellion. Sure enough, and big props to my buddies on Twitter, listeners of the show, who all chimed in and said, yep, Trent, you totally did, you totally called it, man, you did say that was the one, so yeah, I did, it was a good guess, you know, I was, I was like, I mean, it was common sense kind of guess, but I think it, I think it was cool, I'm psyched for them to go back to, to Rebel, I love Rebel, Rebel looked amazing on the tapings, looked amazing for Slamversary, it gives a big time feel to Impact Wrestling, uh, also real quick, side note, it was revealed today that in May, Impact is going to the ECW Arena for a set of tapings. The ECW Arena. Uh, no further details, but it was revealed it was in May. Uh, KM actually confirmed the news, so 
huge stuff. I'm making that trip. I always wanted to go to ECW Arena. I never got to go in the heyday. I visited it on the outside only. Never got to go inside. Loungers, if you've been there, let me know. Let me know. Uh, get, tell me your experience. I'm a, I was a big ECW fan. Never made it to the arena. But I'm psyched I get to see Impact in the arena. That's going to be great. All right, guys. We go from there. Sue Young and Allie taking on Kira and Jordan Grace. Solid match. It was long. They gave him enough time, which I liked. I, I like that they gave him a lot of flexibility on this one. A lot of room to work with. Uh, Allie and Sue, I noticed, have get, been getting better week to week. It's been getting stronger. They've been kind of getting that rhythm more week to week, which I like. And if you're gonna if you're gonna run the story, those two have to look very credible. So far, so good. I think it's getting better. Uh, the pop of the night for me, a uh, moment of the, on, uh, on, of this match, I should say. The at one point, the the lights go out, and. I think because it's like tag match. Sue's on the outside, ready for the tag in. Lights go out. Lights come back on. Rosemary is in Sue's place on the outside. And Allie looks freaked out. Like, what in the hell? What happened to Sue? What's going on? Freaks her out. And then she disappears. I thought that was great. I thought it was really... I love the lights out and come back on and reveal things. Like I said, I'm a big ECW fan. ECW was notorious for that. Big fan of that stuff. So when that happens, I'm, I'm good with it, man. And they did this really well. Uh, whether it was smoothened out in editing, whatever it is, on TV, it looked great. I love it. I love this tease, this this Rosemary thing. But we can't go too much longer. We got to give it a pay. We got to give something because it's it's too much week to week where Rosemary's not doing anything other than just appearing. So we need something to happen. We need something to shift uh, into an action because an action is going to kind of keep it alive. So... Let's see where it goes. But at the, Kira pins Allie because Allie was freaked out and shocked. So Kira took the win on this one. Big pin for Kira. I think that's kind of cool. Let's not gloss over that. I think Kira needed a good win. So good for her. We cut from that guy. So Scarlet training. She's training with Bobo. The Bobo is back. And she's training with him. Goofy training session. You know, Scarlet's wearing a very revealing, very revealing dress. Uh, you know, Bobo's being teased. The typical thing. She's kind of just shitting on him. Practicing her punches and kicks on him. At one point, kick, kicks him into the pool. Bobo takes a pool dive. Everybody pops for, for a pool pool dive, a cake dive. Uh, you know, what else? Let's get gets over and wrestling. Cake, cake and pool dives are great. Foiled weddings, you know, all sorts of goofy stuff. It always works. Always works. Especially Bobo. He's a goof. All right. We go from there. And uh, to Tessa Blanchard uh, via Skype. She's videoed in. She tra she challenges Taya on February fifteenth. Uh, I believe that's the Uncaged show. She challenges challenges her there for uh, for the title rematch. We'll see what happens. See if Ta Taya accepts later on in the evening. They catch up with Rich Swan, I believe, uh, Melissa Santos, and she asks him, you know, about what Sammy said, things he was talking about, and um, Rich starts giving background to him and Sammy, and uh, he's talking about. You know, the, the roads they travel up and down. They start flashing in old photos of the two of them. I, I've known these guys for a little while. I had no idea they had this much history. And there were pictures from 10, 10 years ago of Rich and Sammy, you know, young. And they're together, a bunch of pictures together. So he's telling them, yeah, you know, without Sammy, it wouldn't be anything. I wouldn't have a life. So he's confirming the story. He's confirming what Sammy said. But here's the thing. Now where do we go? I mean, it's like, okay, you're not going to join me. So I want a match. Or what do we do? I think it's I think it's good if uh, if that's the case, right? Rich doesn't join or he fights it off, and then Sammy leads to a match, and Sammy takes that X Division title, which I felt he should have gotten before. But I think Sammy Sammy needs a belt. Ove needs a title. Sammy especially. I need Sammy to be featured. The guy is too damn good. He's too strong of a character, and he's a very good advocate. Of this company, like he is, he is a good flag bearer. He needs a belt. Can't be the world title right now. The heavyweight title is very, very busy. X title, hundred percent. Put it on Sammy Callahan. I think it's perfect. He's prime. He's prime for it just to make it really, uh, really set him, cement him in a way. You know. So let's. See. I hope it happens. I hope it happens. All right. So we go from that to um, Taya with Melissa Santos. 
So actually, in the last one, I don't believe that Melissa was with Rich. I think it was just a, a, a flashback, a sit-down. So Ty's with Melissa. She cuts a promo on Tessa. She challenges her on February 15th. She says, I'll take your challenge, or I'll challenge you to a street fight. So it'll be a knockouts title street fight. First time ever. The Buena Loca versus the Broken Diamond. So we'll see. That's going to be fun. Their feud's been great. I voted it as a feud of the year last year. And uh, not that I was a big fan of every match they had, but I liked it because of how consistent it was. It was uh, they kept they kept the wave going on it, and I like that they're building, they're trying to build this into a historic feud in these ladies' careers. So uh, I appreciate that part about it. So we'll see. All right, we got that right. Is does Tessa take it back? Because there's also Gail Kim here. I mean, what happens? What do you guys think is going to happen with this one? Do we involve Gail? Where does Tessa get the title back and go fight Gail and really cement her legacy? I don't know. That I'm, I'm uh, jury's out on this one. I don't, I don't know where they're going. Fun to see. All right, Falaba taking on Psycho Clown. Uh, Psycho Clown is, is way over. I was told Psycho is way over with the kids and not with the adults. Fala, I think, is over with everybody. How could you hate Falaba? He's lovable. He's a low panda. Psycho Clown, I love, came out with this like flamethrower metal horns hand. Uh, kids, li- kids love him, but the adults seem not. So we had your famous. We had a great boo and yay chance. So it was a boo, yay, boo, yay, pointing at each other kind of thing. So uh, it's always fun. You need you need the light in the show in the middle. Hey, I'll show people who I see people dog Fala and Can. They're like, oh, they're not good workers, this and that. I'm like, number one, they're great workers. Second of all, every show just can't be can't be like serious all the time. You can't have a show that's constantly just angry, angry, angry. You need to lighten it up. There's there are kids watching. Give it, give them something. They love Psycho Clown. They love Pet Follow Bob. Give them something. Lighten, lighten the mood. Let you know, take take a breather from the serious stuff. Have fun for a few minutes, you know. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see, man. We'll uh, we'll see where they uh, <clears throat> we'll see how they how they how they take that and and run, and run with it. Really. All right, we go from that, guys. Uh, Cajun Johnny and the oh, sorry, Psycho Clown wins that one. Psycho Clown takes that uh, that win. So that was, uh, you know, hey, local guy took the win. Fala doesn't get hurt by a loss. I don't think Fala is ever hurt from a loss. So uh, good good one uh, good one to get the AAA, AAA guy over. Cage and Johnny in the back. They're tense. It's just tense leading. It's hype tense for the match. Cage is hitting it out of the park. Guys, give me your opinion on Cage. A lot of, I, don't get, I don't get enough feedback on Cage. Tell me what you guys think of Cage and Cross. Leave comments. What do you guys think? Tell me. How you feel, uh, or what order you should go in? Should it be cage first and then cross? Cross first, then cage? What do you guys think is going to happen with all this? Uh, let me know. Let me know. Uh, then we go to the back. The luchadors who have appeared on the show so far uh, translated promo. They're talking about basically. In short, they are psyched for the uh, the challenge. It's going to be it's going to be trip uh, AAA guys versus Impact, kind of a World Cup type of thing. Um, they have a name for it. I just couldn't remember what they called it. But uh, they did name it. But, yeah, it's guys, it's going to be uh, AAA versus Impact. Four on four, it looks like. I'm not sure what the Impact side is going to be there. But uh, it'll be fun. If you guys ever remember watching the World Cup matches or the World Cup tournaments from back in the Orlando days, those were a Or even, uh, even the old Asylum days, those were a blast, man. You'd see guys, talent that you end up seeing years later on TV, Oh my God! It, fun stuff, fun, fun stuff. This could be another fun one. the The international tournaments are great. Impact's even doing a Impact versus the World tournament with House of Glory WrestleMania weekend. If you're in the New York area, go check that out. Those tournaments are always great because it's a great way to see how talent you're used to seeing every week performs against international talent that you're not used to seeing every week. So it's fun. All right, so we go. Uh, Go from that to uh, Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards taking on the Rascals. Now, how how fun how fun is this? This is this story is is wacky. This story is is super wacky because it's um it's it the unlikely they call it strange bedfellows is what Josh Josh called it right strange bedfellows I might have gone out of order here guys I'm sorry I was looking at my notes and I just realized I jumped ahead and I'm jumping back so switch the 
Fala and Psycho Clown in this one. I was a little out of order, but we're still covering all the matches. Uh, the um, the Strange Bedfellows match is fun. They were taking on the Rascals, Dez and Wentz, uh, who are fantastic. Who opened up, who, uh, you know, who uh, were nice enough to put a drop into our podcast. So guys, thank you again for introing the pod. That was nice. This was fun. This was like, I don't know where they're going with it, though. It's These two work really well together. That's the thing that gets me. Especially, and, and the Rascals versus anybody is a home run. So you can't go wrong with the Rascals versus anybody. That is that is 100% always a hit. With you put them in the ring, they're gonna get they're gonna get over and get everybody over in the process. But uh, it was great back and forth. And then uh, Eddie attempted to bring his kendo stick in, but the ref stopped him. And then Eli he stole the stick and he hits Dez over the head with it, with the ref not knowing. And then he does a gravy train on Dez, takes the win. And it was like kind of like the – like he's trying to get Eddie to stop being hardcore, but it's like, shh, I'm going to use this, and I'll be I'll, – I'll use hardcore to my advantage when I have to. Confusing situation. Again, I don't know. I'm kind of lost on this one. Where do you go with this? I do like that it's a strong opponent for each guy. I think it's good to, for these guys to be in a strong spot, uh, especially together. I don't like the Rascals taking the loss. I feel like you could have put anybody in there. Rascals need to stay strong. But, again, they're guys who, like, they're not hurt by a loss. But I'd like to keep them strong. So, I'm not. I wasn't too hot. I wasn't too crazy about the uh, the loss for them. But, you know, storylines further. We need to get the Rascals into a nice storyline, too. Or at least smoky segments every show has to happen. Something to keep them keep them out there. You know what I mean? All right, guys. So then we uh, we're ready for main event. So I guess I jumped right, kind of threw out the uh, the promos and in between there already. But let's cover that main event. We got Killer Cross and Moose taking on Johnny Cage, Johnny Cage, Brian Cage, and Johnny Impact. Johnny Cage. They put up a tweet. I'm not see. I'm not crazy why I said Johnny Cage. They put up a tweet of Brian Cage impacted Brian Cage and Johnny Impact, and then a in a split screen photo. It's like Johnny Cage. You know, it's like a Mortal Kombat. I don't even know why I would prompt them to do that, but that's why I was thinking Johnny Cage. But uh, this match, talk about a match where if you turn it, if you show this match to anybody, instantly it's going to be like these guys are main eventers. These guys look like wrestlers. I think I tweeted out and I said this is a straight up hoss match. All four of these guys, even Johnny, right? Like Johnny looks like a star. I'm not taking that away from him. I might not be the biggest fan of his work. But the guy looks like a star. Brian Cage looks like a wrestler. The guy looks like a star. Moose looks like a star. Kriller Cross looks like a star. These guys look like something. They they have an image. You see them and you're like, yeah, these guys, even if you don't know who they are, you're like, they're somebody. They're, I don't know what the hell they are, but they're somebody. It looked like a main event. It had that feel, big fight feel. It was an incredible match. Incredible, hard hitting. You know, these guys are not... Not holding back, pulling out stops. Very, very, th- like a thick match, man. A lot of content on this one. But it was your, uh, it was your classic. You know, hey, these guys don't like each other. But it was a uh, Johnny hits Cage by accident. Moose pins Johnny, and they played up how Johnny has been beaten by everybody involved at this top tier, some form or another. He's been beaten, and uh, now you add Moose to that list. There is a dent in the armor of the champion. A couple of dents, and they're showing the weakness here. You know, like he is vulnerable. And God, that that top tier is so thick and stacked. You can go any direction. You can go three, four directions right now from the from the main event. You could go immediately go cross. You can immediately go. You can go cage. Hell, if you wanted to twist at all, you could even put it in Moose because it's believable. Because Moose has been around in the mix. You have a lot going on. Main event scene is very, very healthy. Just need, like I said earlier, we need to thicken up that mid card, put a title in there, let them go at it too. But guys, that was it, man. That was the um, that was the February first, twenty nineteen edition of Impact Wrestling from Front in Mexico. Uh, again, Trent Solo over here, no Kyle. Kyle, uh, de- ditched me. You know, he left me hanging. So uh, I did say earlier today. I said, you know, I got some news. I was going to reveal something, and I am bringing back a nomination. The Dummy of the Week. It, this week. Who do you guys think it is? The choice is obvious. Anything less would be uncivilized. 
name that reference. Anything less would be uncivilized. If you guys can name that reference, I will like your comment. Leave that down there. That speaks to my age, too, but it's wrestling-related if you guys know that one. But anyway, Kyle, you, my friend, are the dummy of the week. Dummy? Yeah. Absolutely. This, this, this app came in really handy. To, especially Whenever Kyle's not going to be on with me, I'm using this damn app. All right, guys, that was it, man. Uh, appreciate you guys coming out with me solo. It's not as long as a pod as we usually do, but spread the word, guys. Listen, share it, like it, comment. Leave all like I'm interacting. We you see Kyle and I interact with every comment you guys leave. Leave as many as you want. I'm serious. Leave as many as you want. We'll respond to everything. I love talking to you guys. You're the best. You guys are all the best. Spread the word. You know, Impact fans, spread the word. Guys, tweet Impact. Let them know what we're doing over here. If you like us, I want to also give a big shout out to some great fans who have been tweeting um, Impact and Kevin Sullivan and some of the wrestlers about my band Hemi, you know, contributing music to Impact Wrestling. They've been so kind to um, MBG Unicorn, is one, in specific, is one gentleman who's been such a great champion uh, of ours and just constantly letting people know about what my band does. And they're like, hey, th- these guys should do music for Impact. You know, listen, listen to them. So I thought it was cool. I, I, I'm so grateful uh, that, you know, I, I put a tweet out at the beginning of the year. Uh, at the end of last year, I said my goal this year, I've had this goal in mind from for years, since day one. I said one day my my band's music is going to be featured on Impact Wrestling. I said this. I said 2019 is the year it's going to happen. And I'm so happy, I'm so humbled by people putting that word out there for me, you know, even just naturally. So, guys, yeah, take a listen. You know, if you guys like what you hear, let them know. I, uh, I appreciate all the people who have so far. I'm really humbled by that, so... But thank you guys. All right, so here, here's where to find us, right? You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, I should have follow us on everything. The Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at We Talk Impact. Uh, just type in We Talk Impact, all one word, it comes right up. Uh, you can find us on there, connect with us, tweet us, let us know what you think, how'd you like the show. Uh, we are on Facebook, like I said, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube page. We are featured on here on the Impact Lounge, the very famous Impact Lounge. We also uh, simul post this uh, this video in a playlist on our Total Nonstop Impact podcast YouTube page. So follow us there too. We're going to be putting some more stuff on there as well. So check us out on there. We'll be com- Kyle comments from that one. So give it a follow. Uh, subscribe to us there. You can follow Kyle at KL underscore TNI on Twitter. You can follow me at Vanilla Joke on Twitter and Instagram. Connect with me on everything. My band is Hemi, HemiMusic.com, H-E-M-I, Music.com. Connect with us. We're Hemi Music on all the social medias too. Connect. And uh, guys, yeah, we can this this uh, this podcast. I'm sorry, this podcast. You can find this podcast wherever podcasts are found: Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Spotify. Rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a coworker, tell an enemy, tell your mother, tell somebody to rate it. We need, guys, rate the podcast. If you got any of those services, you listen to RSS podcasts, RSS feeds, subscribe to us. Take us on the go with you. If you're not just listening on YouTube, take us on the go. We're on all of those, man. You can find it. Type in Total Nonstop Impact. We come right up. Subscribe to us. Let us know what you think. Really blown away by the numbers so far. You guys have been great. Uh, the numbers keep going up. So obviously, you guys like what we're doing here. The positive impact talk, the great engaging impact talk. I We love it. We welcome it every week. So if you're liking it, let us know in the comments. You know, Let us know in those iTunes comments. Get us up there so more and more people hear it. Spread the word. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for me. I kept you under an hour. That's surprising because Kyle and I somehow squeeze out two hours. Like, most of us are ragging on each other. So uh, no ragging. I ragged on him a little bit. I missed. I, I hate. Hey, when he's not here, I miss him. But I am hope you guys uh, enjoyed hanging out with me this week. I will uh, also start lining up backup backup guests. We're gonna have some. Kyle and I are working on some great guests to do impact reviews with us. Come on with us for specials. If and if you guys are, if you guys want us to do the Twitch specials, let me know. I I would love to do them. I really would. I know Kyle might be a little tied up. I'd love to do them. If he can't do them, uh, I'll get somebody else to do them with me. You know, I'd love for Kyle to do it, but if you guys want us to do those, let me know. I'd love to do a jump on. Just somebody, hey, if any of you guys want to jump on with us, 
We can do it. We can do a party, man. We can do a Google Hangout and do this. If you guys want to do a Twitch special review, I'll lead it, and we can all do it together, man. We can, I think you can fit, I don't know how many you can fit in one thing, but I'll I'll look into it. If there's enough interest, let's do it. Let me know. Leave a message, guys. Leave a message. Uh, leave a, a comment. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for me, guys. Keep still under an hour with you. So thanks very much. Follow us on everything. Get back with us. Connect, and we will talk to you again. Uh, next week, that'll be the February 8th episode. I'm going to actually, wait, side note, before I leave, I'm going to be in Austin, Texas on February 8th for AEW. We're running a show down there. LAX and Lucha Brothers are on that one too, actually. And Sammy. Uh, and I think some more Impact folks. I'm going to be, so I won't be able to, the first time I, ever, I won't be able to watch the live broadcast on Twitch, but I will catch up on it when I get back um, uh, the next day after the show. I'll be back in Chicago. I'll catch up. Kyle and I will jump on. We'll try to get that review to you ASAP. I promise it won't be late. We're going to get that to you. I swear to you, I will get it watched and ready for, uh, to, for to bring to you guys. So February 8th episode will be next week. Like I said, I won't watch it live. Nobody spoil it for me, please. I promise I'll have it watched before that weekend is over. All right, guys, thank you again very much. We'll talk to you soon, and have a good week.